Hi everyone, so it's time for calculus once again, but this time it is about finding the inflection points or sometimes it is spelled like this. Now before we go to inflection point, it is good to recall the difference between concave up and concave down. So a function is concave up if the graph of the function always lie above the tangent line on that interval. So notice that uh, in this parabola, you can draw a line tangent to the parabola at any given point. And notice that the graph will always be above those tangent lines. So you can say that this parabola is concave up at any value of x. Second one is concave down. So notice that the function is concave down on a given interval if the graph of the function always lies below the tangent lines on that interval. So for example, this parabola, you may draw a line tangent to the parabola at any given point and notice that it will always be concave down at any value of x. Of course, it's, this is not always uh, the case. You can have a graph that can be a mixture of concave up and concave down at different intervals. This is the graph of y is equal to x cubed using uh, GeoGebra. So we can actually draw a line tangent to this point and then this point is in the interval negative infinity to zero. So we can have something like okay this for instance all right and then notice that the graph is always below the tangent line. You can draw another line tangent to, uh, okay, at this point, which is also in the interval from negative infinity to zero. And then notice that it is still, it is still, the function graph is still below the tangent line. All right. So we can say now that from the interval negative infinity to zero, negative infinity to zero, the graph is concave down. On the other hand, we can also have a line tangent to this part of the curve, which is from zero to positive infinity. Let's take a look at this example. So if we draw a tangent line, all right, at that point, okay, so notice that the graph this time is above the tangent line. So you can draw a line tangent to this interval of the graph and then it will always be concave up in this case. So for y is equal to x cubed, it is concave down from negative infinity to zero and then concave up from zero to positive infinity. We can also use second derivative to determine whether uh, a function graph is either concave up or concave down. So if the second derivative is greater than zero or positive on an interval, then f is concave up on that interval. On the other hand, if our second derivative is negative or less than zero on an interval, then the function is concave down on that interval. Now there will be situation wherein there's a switch of uh, the shape of the graph we're in from concave up becomes concave down or vice versa from concave down then becomes concave up. In that case, we are going to have what we call inflection point. So if our second derivative changes sign from positive to negative or from negative to positive at a point x equals c, then there is an inflection point located at x equals c on the graph. In particular, that point is what we call an inflection point for that function f. Now let's take a look at this example. So what are the steps in finding the inflection points? Okay, so the first step is find the first and second derivatives. The second one is set the second derivative to zero and solve. And then number three is construct a sign diagram to find out how the concavity changes. All right, so these are the complete steps in finding the inflection points. Now let's have this function. This is our example, x to the power of 6 over 30 minus x to the 5th over 20 minus x to the 4th power plus 3x plus 20. So we have a 6 degree function here. Okay, so let's have the first derivative and the second derivative. So the first derivative is, um, okay, 
x to the fifth power over 5 minus x to the fourth over 4 minus 4x cubed plus 3. Now, we derive this again to get the second derivative, and this is what we are going to get. Okay, so we have a fourth degree um, function that is the second derivative. Second step is we set the second derivative to zero and then solve for x. So it is going to be uh, x to the fourth power minus x cubed minus 12 x squared is equal to zero. So we can factor out the x squared and then we are going to have x squared times x squared minus x minus 12 equals zero. And then we can solve this by factorization and then we will have um, x squared times x minus 4 times x plus 3 equals 0. So setting each factor to 0, we will get x equals 0, x equals 4, and x equals negative 3. So these are the solutions to our second derivative being equal to 0. All right. Now this is where this is not where the steps would end. Okay. So we cannot actually always uh, conclude that all of these x's uh, x equals 0, x equals 4, x equals negative 3. We cannot say that all of these are our inflection points. We cannot conclude that. So one, one more step is needed to, for, for us to determine so that we can clearly see if there is a change in concavity. And that is we need to construct a sine diagram. So sine, diagra sine diagram begins by coming up with a number line. And then we just have to arrange the values of x's, the solutions that we got from second step. So, so that means we have to start from negative 3 followed by 0 and then followed by 4. So that is um, following the order on the number line. So what we need is the sign of the second derivative okay at this particular values but we know that at negative 3 the second derivative is already 0 at x equals 0 at x equals 4 the second derivative are all equal to 0 so what we need now is we need the sign of the second derivative at the different intervals so we have from negative infinity to negative 3 so let's just give a test value so a point uh, an x value that is at the left of negative 3, let's say negative 4, and we have to plug this in in our second derivative. So f uh, double prime of negative 4, we will get positive 128. You don't really need to uh, find the exact value. What we need only is the sign. So um, obviously this is going to be positive. All right. So um, it is not only at negative 4 that our second derivative is positive. It is from negative infinity to negative 3, including or excluding negative 3. So you can give more if you want just to confirm if it is really positive in all of these uh, uh, values in this interval. All right. The next interval is from negative 3 to 0. Okay, or uh, x is more than negative 3 but less than 0. So let's give a test value. One test value is enough. So let's say negative 1. So f double prime of negative 1 is equal to negative 10. So that means the sign is negative. Now, next interval is x is more than 0 but less than 4. Let's give a test value which is 1. f double prime of 1 is negative 12. So that means this is negative. Okay, so you can also try definitely x equals 2, x, x equals 3, and then you will also get a negative sign. And then the next interval is, don't forget the last one, which is from, um, which is x is more than 4. So let's give a test value of 5, f double prime of 5 is 200. So th therefore, this is positive. So this is our complete sign diagram. All right. Now let's take a look at uh, a different summary. We're in all right, so that is negative infinity, negative 3, that's positive. That the second derivative is positive. So from the definition, the graph at this interval, okay, so the graph of the function, which is our sixth degree function, is concave up at this interval from negative infinity to negative 3. Next interval is negative 3 to 0, okay? So this is an open uh, interval, negative 3, 0. It is negative, so it is concave down. And then next is an open interval 0 to 4. Um, if you can recall, you're, we're using parentheses here to signify that 0 and 4 are not included in this interval. So it is negative, therefore it is concave down. And lastly, um, x is more than 4. It is uh, positive, it is plus, therefore it is concave up. 
All right, now uh, we can see now here if there is a change in concavity, okay? So there is a change in concavity between this from concave up to concave down. So we can now say that at x equals negative 3, okay, which is a solution to our second derivative equal to 0, is an inflection point. So we can now say that negative 3, f of negative 3. So what you need... Uh, what, what you need to do is to find the y-coordinate and that is plug in the negative 3 to our original function which is um, f of negative 3, okay? You can just take the value of, uh, of f of negative 3 later on. Now, what about this one? Concave down and then concave down. Okay, remember 0 is a solution to f double prime of x is equal to 0. But 0, notice that there's no change in the concavity. It remains to be concave down. So we can say that um, 0, f of 0 is actually not an inflection point. And lastly, you have a concave down, then concave up. So there's a change in concavity here. So from negative, the sign of the second derivative from negative to positive, then we can now say that 4 at 4 f of 4 is an inflection point. Okay, so this is how you, sh you, you will surely uh, get the points of inflection. Okay, so this is the complete step. And don't forget to... Uh, construct a sign diagram or give a test value. You don't really need to come up with a complete uh, table. So what you can do is just, you know, give a test value at the left, uh, in between, or at the right of whatever interval that you may have, depending on the solutions of the second derivative, which is equal to zero. So that's it for today. Hope to see you next time.